Hey guys, happy Monday night. It's Hitman23, and I'm coming tonight with part two of my 2024 national um, recap. Um, tonight's going to be definitely pickup focused. And I also want to, um, I doubt anybody's going to see this before anyway, but I'll say it. We're going to go live tonight um, on Big Scott 35 channel at 8 o'clock. I, I, I don't think anybody will see this before 8 o'clock, but that's what's going on. Um, but yeah, let's get right into the, uh, the, the pickups from the show. Um, you know, stuff I didn't talk about last night was um, the get-togethers. I just was so... It was so awesome to get together with everybody, uh, especially on um, Thursday night and Friday night. Thursday night we had it at the American Legion. You know, I'm sure everybody's talked about it. and uh, But it was just super cool to meet guys I'd been, you know talking to and watching for YouTube on years or four years and finally get to meet them like Snoop and Nate um, and Big Mac fanatic and just and, and I, I, I can't name everybody but the you know those three stick to my head because I've you know I've been watching their channels for such a long time I um, there's so many other great channels too it was just such a, a great time I don't know how many people were at that uh, get together but if somebody knows how many people were there please let me know it definitely just felt like it was a couple hundred people. Um, the, the picture was just amazing. It's there were so many people that you couldn't even really. You had a the pictures had to be flipped on its side on Facebook. It was so you know such a wide angle picture, and it was kind of cool because when we were gathering for the picture, some um, some strangers stopped and I don't they I don't know what they, what they thought was going on. But these two girls stopped and they, they took the picture for us. It was pretty funny, and uh, just a smashingly awesome time. Um, getting together with everybody in that uh, in that um, in that arena. So, um, what did I pick up? Um, anybody else feel exhausted like I do? Man, they got the the national hangover, and I really didn't even drink. So, first thing is I um, first thing I'm going to show is a couple of Don Manningleys I picked up for the old collect. Uh, first thing is this 1990 Donruss um, the Learning Series. I think these were handed out to teachers back in 1990. Um, they're not, they're pretty easy to get. I shouldn't say they're hard to get. They're, they're pretty, they're fairly easy to get. Um, you go on YouTube, and get the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, eBay get these pretty quickly or pretty easily. So uh, finally got that one for the collection. It was, uh, it was cool. And then I picked up this one I've never seen before. It's for the spirit of the game. I have the, um, I have the regular size card, but this is a three by five. And it comes with the envelope. You can see the envelope in the back. I don't believe, you know, I didn't even pull this out. I don't believe these are numbered, are they? Oh, yes, they are numbered. They're numbered out of 10,000. You can see right there. Or right there. And um, this, uh, that's what the front of the envelope looks like. So I like when that stuff, you know, it comes together and to have the whole... You know the whole package the total package Lex Luger right um, looking forward to going live tonight should be fun uh, next and I think the last I, know, I picked up like four Donnie's I showed you one last night the one that Big Scott got me but the only other Donnie I picked up was uh, this one and this one's cool it's something I've never seen before it is a European offering from France and it's this new sport um, 4x6 of Don Mattingly. And uh, you can see there it's in French for space, right? And on the back, it is all in French, the whole back. Now, these came in a full sheet with three other players, but I didn't really... I would love to have gotten the full sheet as well, but I had nowhere to put it in my bag, and it was just not an easy thing to fly with, so I decided against it. Um, so... Those are my Donnie pickups. Um, and I can't read French, so. Um, yeah. I also uh, picked up this beautiful 1976 Tops John Gianelli. This is a buck. Again, another set, you know, that is just, well, you know, I, I don't even want to say it anymore, but pretty easy to get. Pretty inexpensive. So I picked that up. Because I love these 76 tall boys. They're so cool. So I got that. And oh, you know what? 
I gotta just I have as I go through my piles here, man. I just gotta show stuff. These were kind of pre-show buys. Um, came during the show, so I'm gonna show them as I have, I got them at the show. I got this really nice um, Leaf Limited Eric Chavez Bronze. Um, this is numbered 32 out of 100. So that's really cool and shiny. And I got this nice. Um, this is a um, lumber edition out of, I think this is FLIR. This FLIR, I think it's 2001 or something. And it's a signed bat piece. Got those really inexpensive. So there's a good example of a player who is a really good player, but you can get his stuff for really inexpensive if you want to build a nice PC. And I really dig Eric Chavez. So did that. And the guy who sold me um, this card, he threw in a couple of bonus cards. He threw me that Studio Mike, uh, Mark McGuire and that 1991 Carney Lansford. Another really cool pickup is um, this 1954 New York Journal American Jim Jr. Gilliam. Um, I love the Journal Americans. I have the Monty Irvin and I wanted to pick up, you know, one from each team. I wanted to pick up, a, you know, a Giant, a Dodger and a sure Yankee. Uh, don't have the Yankee yet, but um, and I'm doing Jim Gilliam for the uh, Dodger fran all-time Dodger franchise player because he spent his whole career with the Dodgers. But that thing is just sharp and awesome. So I got the Junior Gilliam, and the back has the uh, the schedule, the home schedule for the Dodgers in '54. And then this is really cool because this is a brand new, never had one of these before in the collection. This is a 1936 Gaudi Wide Pen Red Wolf Type One. And I believe I had said a couple of videos ago, I'm doing a little bit of a Red Rolf run. Um, he's the, uh, the only third baseman to play his whole career for the New York Yankees. And he's a you know, pre-war player, solid, solid player for the Yanks. Um, and uh, actually is from New Hampshire. So um, very, very cool there. So my first 36 Gowdy wide pen, uh, which is really nice. The back is blank. And very cool. So that's that stuff. And next, I'm just going to start going off my pile here. I got this. This is out of uh, 1975 TCMA, the all-time New York Yankee team. And it's none other than third baseman Red Rolf. So I got that. I think I found that like in a dollar box or something. So that's cool. And just some random. These are all like dollar purchases. It was like 10 for a dollar, I think 12 for 10. Um, this 1969 Daryl Dess, top football from 1969, my birth year. So I'm going to try to work on that set. The back is a puzzle piece. And guards never have, or linemen really never have stats in the back of their cards anyway. And I also picked up this Johnny Robinson right there. And this one is a 19, this is from 68, and it's from Fleer. It's the, um, it's a Laughlin, and it's depicting the 1939 World Series. And um, Charlie Keller. Those are great. Love those cards. And the back gives you a little, little lesson on the 39 World Series. Um, very cool. Um, Charlie Keller's nickname was King Kong. I never knew that. I just, I just quickly glanced at that on the back of the card. Um, this is a 1998 uh, Topps Tino Martinez. This is a Hall of Fame logo. So pick that up for the Tino PC. That's cool. And also pound this Topps... Um, this is a Wrecking Crew insert of Mark McGuire. Um, can't tell you the year, but again, these are all like in a dollar box. And next, I picked up this 1970, beautiful, sharp 1970 Lime. Nice slugger there. Beautiful card, beautiful shape. And another beautiful, nice, sharp 1973. Tommy John and a 1974 Tommy John. 
So, back to back Tommy Johns. I was pretty impressed when I was, uh, actually, my wife wanted to see what I picked up and I showed her that. She goes, isn't that guy the, they did the surgery after? I was like, Elisa, impressive, you know, pretty impressive. Uh, Action packed. This is cool. I never saw this before and I'm, I forget what year these are from. These are 90s, but um, this is a really cool one. It's a red bordered Thurman Munson. That's a great image on that card. I never saw that. That was like definitely one I wanted to to grab onto. And can't wait till next year's national already. I just can't wait. It just uh, such a great time. And another 1973 tops. This is the um, Campy starts winning rally. It's um, World Series game number seven. It was the um, the 1972 World Series, right? So it was the uh, first of the A's three in a row, 72, 73, and 74. So there's that. Very cool. And then, again, some random stuff. Um, I really dig Hockey Hall of Famers. So I picked up this uh, Grant Fuhr. This is an 80, it looks like an 89, 88, 89 Grant Fuhr. So, ooh, thunder. The thunder is coming. So I got that for the Hall of Fame representation for hockey. And another one, just picked up another Mario. It was cheap, so I can pass up on a Mario Lemieux. These are, I think these are 90-91s. Very cool. And then a Yari Curry. This is actually, this is an OPG, not a Tops. The other two were Tops. Um, this is an 83. I guess 83 OPG. Yeah, you know me. So got that. And then for my 77 set build, I picked up this Flyers Joe Watson. And this Bruins Wayne Cashman. So right stuff. This stuff is the stuff that's kind of the, the random stuff that I absolutely love looking for it shows I you know getting big cards is great I, I love doing that and I love looking for them and and finding the right one but honestly for me it's more fun finding stuff like this this random stuff in a box you just don't know what you're gonna find and it's just something that kind of strikes you and like says buy me so I really get a lot of enjoyment out of that uh, this is a oh I'm bad at my uh, football years guys I think this is a 1960. I think this is a 1960. Yeah, I believe this is a 1960 Ralph Guglielmi Redskins. And I'll tell you, vintage, vintage football, if I didn't say it last night, I'll say it tonight again. Vintage football is very, very obtainable. Very obtainable. It's not, um, it's not crazy. Um, Gary Glick, another Redskin. The backs of these have the scratch-offs and, you know... Nice, you know, white lettering on that dark, I guess you would say dark green color. And then here's another set build card for the 77 top set, the Red Sox team card. I never realized they had three floating heads up there. So we got that. And another um, World Series card. A's make it two straight. And then an all-time Tiger. Played his whole career for the Tigers. John Hiller, 1980 tops. And then we got Chico Glenn Resch, the Islander, uh, the Islander goalie. And we got a nice bat cage card of Hall of Famer Carl Yastrzemski from the 1981 top set. So I was trying to figure out who that might be back there. It looks like number 23. I do not know enough about the Red Sox who wore number 23 back in the early 80s. So, but it's a, it's a cage card. So had to pick that up. And a beautiful bat rack card. Uh, insert um, for, I'm going to try it, Lou. I'm going to try and make you proud, Lou Rock. Roberto Clemente. Look at that bat rack, baby. Very cool. Very, very cool. 
in the back. So, and then this beautiful 1970 Kuzman shuts the door, World Series game number five of the 1969 World Series, which happened right before this guy was born, like the month before I was born. So, there's that. And we got another caged Hall of Famer, and Cal Ripken, the uh, 85's Tops uh, All-Star Glossy male inset. So, and a big league bros, the Brett brothers out of 77 Tops for the set build. George and Ken. And then probably, guys, this will be the last card of this video because I'm trying to keep them a little tighter. I don't want to go too long and too crazy. I rescued this wonderful 1964 Tops Kurt Flood. Now, he was one of the cards I was looking for on my list. Um, I couldn't find, um, I just couldn't find a graded one. Um, it's not that there wasn't one there. There probably was. I just didn't go to, I, you know, go to enough tables to find one. I'm sure I could have found one. But it is a bit of a tough card. Um, not sure if it's as tough as it was. 10-ish so years ago, um, there was a collector, and he's been written up a few times about um, about 10 years ago or so, maybe it's a little bit longer, where he was like hoarding all the 64 tops Kurt Flood cards. And I want to say he bought in the thousands of them. He's like accumulating in the thousands of them. So he kind of caused an artificial shortage, and... Um, but I believe now, like, prices are crazy on this bad boy. Um, but I believe the prices have, have come down for, since, since the kind of the hubba baloo about that whole thing. But the 1964 Tops Kurt Flood, how to rescue it. I am going to get a nicer one. And it's going to be nice uh, bookend to my 58 rookie with the green background. I think they look really nice together. And I actually might do a run of Kurt Flood. So. Um, there we go. I just love that that card. And that's it, guys. Uh, I've got to get prepared to go on Big Scott's channel and, um, you know, do my thing over there at the guys. So uh, you all have a great evening. May the cardboard God shine down upon each and every one of you. Enjoy your collections. Welcome home. We're going to do it again next year, and I'll catch you on the next video. Good night, guys. Take care.